Hey guys, this is my video on how to do the 2D calibration stuff. So first things first, let's make sure that we have everything downloaded that we need to. So this is our homepage for Moodle. I recently found out that um, if, in, if you don't want to scroll through all of this, you can go to the link that says resources. And that will pull up, <clears throat> oh, it's asking me to sign in. This will pull up um, kind of a list of all of the links that are in the course, which is a little bit, like, friendlier, and it labels, like, what week things are in. So this week, um... You need lab one, that'll be your lab instructions and questions that you'll include in your document uh, when you write up your report. The chat field data is, um, <clears throat> excuse me, is a MATLAB file. And this will be incorporated into one of the activities for lab one. So have it downloaded, but you don't try to open it unless you have MATLAB. Um, what we're really interested in is the getting started with the 2D single camera calibration and then the appropriate software that you'll be using for um, whatever operating system you have. So for me, I have a Mac. So let's say that I download um, this while that's downloading. Um, if I click in this getting started folder, you'll find the checkerboard pattern that you need to print out, the image sensor formats, which has the table that um, I showed you guys in lab um, this week, and then we also have uh, the getting started PDF. So there's two files. There's a like a this MLX is a MATLAB live script file. So if, if you're um, not sure what your sensor size is and you're having to use the different calculations that are provided in this PDF, you can just open this live script in MATLAB and the code will already be posted in there so you can fill in um, numbers on like if you found out what your crop factor was or aspect ratio. Okay, so these are important documents that you'll want to um, download to your computer. <laughs> When I go into my downloads folder, most of you have probably gotten past this part, so if you're having problems with installation, you can keep watching. If not, you can skip to the next section of the video. But we need to open or unzip this file, and you will see that if I hover over this, you can see it's called two, Single 2D Camera Calibration Installer. And the installer is different than the actual application, which I think some confusion might be coming from. So if I double click the installer, that's going to bring up this um, error message that a lot of you are getting. So it can't be identified because it's not in the App Store, basically. Okay. So instead, I cancel and I right click or two finger click on um, trackpad, or if you're using a mouse, you can right click on the mouse. And then I'm going to click open. And then that should give me this option to actually start the installation process. So once you click open, you can start doing, like, it'll pull up the installation window. You press next, 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 next until it's done downloading, which does take some time. Press finish. And then the application should be on your computer. What I suggest after this installation process occurs is to delete the installation packet. And then there's a couple of ways that you can actually find the application on your computer. So if you are a Mac user, or if you're a PC user, it's pretty easy. You can go into like your Windows menu that's usually down at the bottom left corner, and you can just search um, 2D camera, and the option of the application should pop up. For Mac users, if you want, you can look in the application's um, area of your finder. Uh, the application is actually in a folder that's called University of Massachusetts Amherst. If you click on 2D camera calibration 
and then open the application folder. The actual application is right here. And you can tell that it's an application because it says application. All right, so it's not going to open some weird thing. The other way you can find it is by, well, that's one way. The other way you can find it is by um, going to your launch pad at the bottom, so this little rocket ship. And then you can see it's similar to like a phone home screen where you have all of your apps downloaded. You can kind of toggle through these options. Mine, again, is in a University of Massachusetts Amherst folder, and this is the actual application. If you're not familiar with um, the launch pad and you want like a keyboard shortcut, you can also press F4. So this is my Bluetooth keyboard, but it mimics my Mac keyboard. So F4 has this like uh, these little six squares on it. So if I press that, you'll notice my screen now brings up the launch pad app display. Okay, I can press that again and that stuff goes away. So that's another way of opening it. Alternatively, you can press um, command spacebar to search your computer and type in 2D and you can already see it's automatically popping up. So um, those are various ways that you can open the application. Once it's open, if it will work for me now, <laughs> Um, once it's open, this is where you're going to want to make sure that you look at this getting started document because it has all of the instructions that will be useful for setting up everything. So the instructions are here, okay? Um, and these were all the steps that we went through in class. Um, so make sure that you measure the space that you are going to be moving in. Make sure, um, or get those dimensions in meters. So those are your X and Z. That's like your floor area. Then you're going to measure the height, um, and <clears throat> as well as, <clears throat> excuse me, the X and Z coordinates. <clears throat> oh my God. The X and Z coordinates of where your camera is located. Again, it's important that um, when you're setting up your computer, your screen is perpendicular to your keyboard um, and that your computer is raised off the floor to some degree um, because your field of view, if you think, especially if you're a taller person, you might want your camera up a little bit higher if you're short like me, then maybe setting it on a table or a chair will be good enough. But <clears throat> the taller you are, the greater height your field of view needs to have. So just keep that in mind. Um, but you need the dimensions of your space. You need the coordinates on where your computer is located. And then you also need to figure out the size of your image sensor. Okay. So for some of you, um, maybe your software or your computer is on this list and then that would be super nice to find. If not, you can do a Google search. Um, so for me, uh, I have MacBook Air 2017 tech specs. Or I could write um, image sensor size or something like that. But it should take you to um, a technical specifications page by the maker of your device. Um, for me, I know I wasn't able to find anything, um, but anybody who has a PC, like using an HP or um, if you have like an, a Lenovo or whatever, right, those you should have tech specs um, provided by the company that made your device. So see if you can find information. I don't, yeah, <laughs> That's it. it's just a kind of a tricky game. Um, but once you figure out what your sensor type is, um, for example, Mac users can use the quarter inch. So these would be the dimensions that would be of use to you. If you're not able to find information, that's where these options come in up here. So um, 
if you can't find sensor size, try looking at these options and what information you might need from those uh, to figure out if that might be another method to use um, to figure out what your sensor size is. And if you need help with this, I can try my best to help you. Uh, I didn't write the code for it, so um, we can try to figure it out together. Um, but that's that's the other way you could uh, set up. But you you want to make sure that um, you have. I might have to quit the application. It's not opening. Um, you just want to make sure that you have as close to accurate information as you can with regard to your sensor size, because that's going to come in when you put your numbers in for the calibration. All right. So when the application opens, this is what should pop up. This is also when you want to have your checkerboard ready. I did find out it needs to be printed. Okay, so um, you can use campus resources. I, I think some people were saying the campus center, which I'm not familiar with that, but the campus center has some printing options for students as well as potentially the library, but um, I heard that was closed. So try to see if you can find campus resources to print your stuff um, since it's probably a little bit closer and more convenient. If not, you can always use um, Office Max. I don't know if Staples does printing services um, or FedEx or Kinko's um, to print this out. Once you print it, you just keep it for the rest of the semester. So it's a very small investment and might be inconvenient, but we have to have it for this program. So make sure you have that printed and ready to go. When you generate your calibration images, reminders that the program is a little bit slow. That might be a little bit of an understatement, but um, only click once, wait a few seconds because sometimes the prompts are just delayed showing up like now. <laughs> okay, so the first prompt is going to ask you to uh, select where you want to save your information. So you're going to click OK. And then it'll take you to your directory for your computer. So I created a file for our class on my desktop. If you want to do something similar, feel free. Um, it's a quick location for class stuff, um, but I'll click open. It'll search for my camera, initialize my camera, and then this is where the photos get taken for the actual calibration. So um, I have my FaceTime camera on uh, so that you have a comparison with the program um, to see the lag time. Okay. But again, primarily you want the image, this calibration checkerboard. You want it in as much of the screen as possible. And the more dimensions that you give the computer to read, the kind of the better that your calibration will come out. But you want this entire checkerboard in the frame of view. So as you can see, like the still image that the program is stuck on right now has the bottom part of the calibration image cut off. So that might not be um, a usable photo, um, but if you draw your attention just above the image window, it says taking photo one of nine in T minus, and then it has like 4.0652. So that's the time. So T, right? Um, that's the time and uh, until the next capture is taken. What I suggest you guys to do, because the lag time is so bad, as you can see, like I moved a long time ago, but the image is still um, kind of down, <laughs> even though I've moved it up. So. Um, I would recommend that you kind of just move it, sit as still as possible, and then after you notice the capture is taken, then you can kind of shift around. Um, but you can keep your eye on the timer 
so that you know when the capture is being taken. That way you know when you can shift positions. So you can see <laughs> we've been sitting here a lot longer than four seconds. Um, and my body still hasn't shifted positions. So, and the lag time on your computer might be different. It, it may, maybe is faster. Surely this is actually the longest that this calibration process has taken me so far. Um, and the first capture has been taken. And my power just turned off, so that's cool. <laughs> okay, but um, generally what you want to do is just keep... I don't know why it's going so slow. Um, it could be because of my screen recorder, but if you watch my FaceTime camera, what you want to do is just make sure that um, you're tilting your picture, putting it in towards the camera, away from the camera, maybe tilting it forward and backwards. What this tilting does is it creates um, more of a three-dimensional concept of this checkerboard. And my calibration is probably going to be bad now because I moved around so much. Um, but again, you want the checkerboard to take up a majority of the screen space without losing too much of the image within the frame that's shown on this actual um, image area. But this is taking... A ridiculous amount of time. So I'm gonna pause the video and then I'll come back when you actually open your capture images. Okay so we have nine usable images that we got from our calibration. So we click OK and then we go to calibrate camera and project capture volume. So it'll ask you to select where your calibration images were stored. Mine were in my desktop, in our 2D motion capture folder. It'll tell you how many images are uploaded. And then this is where you enter your parameters. So the sensor width and height are either going to be estimated um, that using the code that is in this file or maybe you were able to find your information um, and then at which point you can just insert that. For me, I'm going to go off of this image sensor format table because I think my computer has a quarter inch um, sensor type in which the width, um, I can zoom into this too so you can see a little bit better because it is very small. The width for a quarter inch sensor type is 3.6 for the width and 2.7 for height in millimeters. So I'm going to put that in 3.6 and 2.7. The checkerboard square length, again, when you print it, you want to make sure that you actually measure this with a ruler. Again, the measurement needs to be in millimeters. You only need to actually measure one square um, and one side of that square. So Different printers have different margins, so it's important that you actually measure. Don't use somebody else's measurements. Um, my square is 23 millimeters, so I'm going to put that as my checkerboard length. As far as my room size, I'm going to use my office space, um, saying, like, this is how much space I'm going to move down soon. Okay, so we need to take a tape measure. Mine measures in inches, so we're going to have to do some conversions, but basically you can see like how much space you have. So I have 53 inches across, that's kind of like my x-axis, and then from, uh, let's say that my computer, pointing that like right in your guys' faces, but let's say that my computer is the starting point. Um, of my movement space in which I have 80 inches and I forgot what I already said 53 okay <clears throat> so what we do with this information is we can go to Google 
Okay, and we can say 53 inches to meters. Help. <laughs> oh no, I got kicked offline. That's right. Hold on a second. Okay, I forgot. My power got turned off, so I don't have Wi-Fi. But generally, you would put in, like, how many inches to meters. The other thing that I just tried is asking Siri um, how many inches to meters. So I will present Siri's results, but I think Google's probably your best option. All right, so I asked, I consulted with Siri, and she gave me some information. Um, but my X dimension of my room, so the, the width of my room or the length of my room, um, was 53 inches. So Siri said 53 inches is 1.35 meters. So we could put 1.35 because we're putting this in an XZ format. So how far across versus how far away from the camera. Right? I had 80 inches in depth, which is my Z dimension. So I converted that to meters and got 2.03. Okay. And then I have to consider the location of my camera in my space. So again, you're measuring to where your camera is on your computer. It's important that you line everything up with that little black dot um, where your camera exists. Uh, as as accurately as you can. So I'm kind of I used this dresser as kind of a border for my movement space. I don't really have a lot of space in here, but we can guesstimate how far that would be from the actual camera. And my camera is kind of located at about 12 inches. It's not the most accurate measurement, but um, I could then ask Siri how many inches. Um, or how many meters is 12 inches. And then I can also measure from the floor to where my camera is. And again, this I have like a, a rising stand-up desk, so this isn't the most accurate measure, but I'm going to ballpark this at 45 and a half inches. So we can consult with Siri again. OK, so we consulted with Siri. Um, and she said that the dimension from, like, the edge of my space in the x-axis to where my computer is located is 0.37 meters. So that's lengthwise where my camera is located. Heightwise from the floor to the actual camera bit on my computer is 1.16 meters. And then Z, right, we're following this format, Z is the depth where my computer is located in this Z axis. So since Z, I'm starting kind of my computer at the front of my space, I can say Z is at zero, right? Because the point, if we take our floor, this is kind of what I did in lecture, if we take our floor space, X is the length pretty much of this wall where the whiteboard is to my dresser. Okay, and then, um, so that's X. Z is from my computer to the wall, right? So if we take those dimensions, Z and X, right? If I flip this, the location where my computer is located is on X. So that's like kind of the front of the room here, right? But where it intersects with Z is at the origin. So we would say the coordinate for Z is zero. And this is probably going to be true for the whole semester. So really what you need to know is X and Y. Um, of course, it depends on the space that you're using. So just be smart about it. Once we press OK, we can get an idea of our space. So we should get two primary images that we are interested in. One of them is going to be the calibrated space with your checkerboard images. So it'll pull up like where what the location of the images in your space were in orientation to the camera. And then the other image we're going to get is a three-dimensional view of the field of view of our camera. So examples being while this is calibrating, we should um, like if I stand really close to my camera, hi, um, 
you can't see my whole body, right? Because the field of view closer to the camera is very limited. So you can think that field of view is a very small box. But as I move away from my camera, I told you I wear sweats, guys. Comfort. Anyways, the further away I get from my camera, the more of my body that you can see, right? So this is when we get that three-dimensional image, and I might have to pause for the program to run faster. But when we get that three-dimensional image, that's just showing that the field of view, as you get further and further away from your camera, gets larger. Okay. So this is important for understanding how much space we need to move, right, um, based on what we're working with. So this is where my images were located in the space. This is where my camera is located in the space. So you can see it's on um, the middle, middle-ish of my x-axis. It's um, the height is y, right, which is this dimension here, and z is the depth. So this distance would represent how far away the wall is behind me, okay? But when we look in this three-dimensional space here, um, there's this little cube. You can rotate the 3D view, and you can see what I'm talking about in terms of um, these squares. So the field of view changes as you get further away, right? And this is actually pretty accurate to the space that I'm in because if you guys uh, looked when I backed up in my FaceTime camera, when I backed up, you couldn't see my feet still, right? And in this picture, the furthest I could stand away, which I was standing against the wall, you can see there's space underneath this, this field of view box, the biggest field of view that we have available to us. So that means that anything below these dimensions, so pretty much anything under about 500 millimeters is not going to be seen in the field of view. So that would mean I either need to push my camera backwards, which I don't have the option of in my space um, because this is a smaller room. I would either need to push my camera back so that that field of view extends to the floor or I would need to lower my camera in the space um, so that uh, the field of view captures the floor from where my feet are located. But the way that you can kind of use this to understand how much space you need is by looking at this information down here. So the field distance or the principal distance is going to be the z-axis, so how far your camera needs to be away from you in order to capture your entire body. The field width is the x-axis Okay, so um, how much space in the sideways direction do you need to capture um, your movement? And then the field height is going to be um, basically this dimension of this yellow box. is based on where your camera is located, how much space in the vertical direction is your camera going to be able to capture. So in my case, two meters away, so a two meter distance from the camera, um, will give me a field width of two and a half meters, so two and a half meters, or 2.3 meters, sorry, um, spanning in this direction is how much I uh, would need to be seen by my camera. And then the field height is 1.3 meters, okay? So mm -hmm. if I ask, um, hey Siri, how many meters is five foot four? Okay, so Siri just said that 5 feet is 1.52 meters. I'm 5'4", so we can tag on uh, 4 inches. We can tag on probably about 8 centimeters on that. Okay, so you can see my height is larger than the field height, which means that part of my body is now going to get cut off, right? which is what we already determined because this yellow part is not flush with the floor, okay? So that's why, that's the whole purpose of this program is for you to understand 
based on the dimensions of the space that I'm working in, do I actually have enough space to capture my whole body? Um, and then you can kind of figure out how you need to move your camera so that you actually get captured. Okay, um, so hopefully this setup was helpful. Um, beyond this, when you are using this program to uh, capture your lab documents um, or your, your coloring drawing things. All right, so restarted the program. We'll see how this goes. Um, you right click capture images, so that's the same steps that I just did. And then we should be asked to direct our images somewhere. There we go. So I want to direct my images to my desktop in my 241 folder. Let's, I'm just going to stick it there for now. Um, and then searching for camera, initializing camera. And then I think this might work out better. But I have a feeling we might run into the same problems in terms of the capturing part. Um, because my screen recorder delays the program. So I could indicate I want to take, uh, well, for the sake of this example, let's say I just want to take three images. And then the time in between images, I want to do three seconds. You can give yourself more time if you have to flip through pages, but you might have to trial and error with this one. Um, so I'm going to say, okay, and then this is the motor development book that I teach my motor development class, but let's say it's my coloring book. And then I would just hold it up in front of the camera, let it take its pictures, which it'll probably do when I actually turn my screen recorder off. So you camera, another photo, another photo, etc. So once it takes all of the photos, then it should and I haven't actually gotten to do this yet because, um, you know, um, but it, I was informed that the program should automatically export your images into a mat file, which should open in MATLAB. So that would probably be the best place where you can check to see if your images actually turned out okay. Um, I'm going to ask if you guys can use um, apps in your phone as an alternative. So um, if you're an Apple user, I know that the Notes app, so this one here, I don't know if you can see that on my screen, but the Notes app will allow you to, um, if you click on like create a new note and you go to, ah, Hold on a second. Now my phone's bugging out. So if you go, when you get to the notes page, um, if you see the camera here, it'll give you the option to scan documents. So when you choose that option, it'll open up like a camera view. And then you can basically, it'll recognize the size of your documents when you point your camera at it, and you can export those to a PDF. The other app that I would recommend if we're able to do PDF, so if we can't, then completely disregard this part of the video. But the other app that you can get that I know is available in the um, Google Play Store, if you have an Android, um, is this Adobe Scan app. Again, hopefully you can see it because I can't see my actual camera. Um, but the Adobe Scan app works very similarly, where you can say, I want to um, create an image. It actually should automatically go to creating um, scan documents, but then you can hold it above and adjust your pages um, in the actual app. So I will, I will check to see if those are options that are available to us. If not... I hate to say it, but you might have to trial and error with these because, as you can already see, I have uh, an inkling that 
I'm going to get blurry images and it's going to be difficult to grade. So um, I'll see what our options are and I'll get back to you guys on that. But those are some options that you can use. Um, hopefully this process is user friendly for you. Um, and I think that's it for this video. I'm sorry it was kind of long, but hopefully it was helpful.